Greetings in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, my great loving. This lesson is providing you with additional information on teens drug abuse. What you have learned in the lesson that is given in your textbook contained drug abuse or substance abuse and the drugs that are being used in India of some of which you have not even heard about but this gives you an outlook regarding what is happening around us especially in the country that we love and that will create in you an awareness of the substance abuse that is existing among children of your age let's look into the lesson furthermore learning objectives the objectives given over here is meant for both part 1 and 2 of this lesson it consists of to define and know about what is substance abuse different types of drugs its psychological physical and physiological effect harmful effects on brain addiction want to quit spiritual counseling support of the church questions part 1 and 2 the bible its strength work citation and my prayer we will be looking into part 1 of this particular lesson part 1 constitute the following it starts with what is substance abuse substance abuse is the repeated harmful use of any substance including drugs and alcohol the substances may be legal prescription drugs or banned substances as well some of some that aren't even classified as drugs abuse can occur when you are introducing the substance the way it was recommended or because you are taking more than the prescribed dosage harmful use harmful drug use occurs when a person repeatedly uses the drug in a way that can cause significant impairment including sickness disability loss of control self control loss of self control ignoring responsibilities social problems etc so when we say substance abuse we know that we are not using it in the appropriate way it is supposed to be used or we are using something which we are not supposed to use so let's look into it furthermore drug abuse in north america this particular slide refers to the most common drugs or most commonly abused illegal drugs in the order in which they are being used marijuana comes first then comes methamphetamine cocaine hallucinogens ecstasy or molly heroin an attempt is made here to provide a glimpse on the harmful effects of some of them in the following sections one big question that's always up in the air is why are teens vulnerable to nicotine what is so special about this age let's look into it the adolescent brain is still developing and won't be fully mature until the person reaches their mid 20s because it's still developing 
The brain is more vulnerable to changes caused by nicotine at this time. The brain's reward system. The brain's reward system is activated when you experience something enjoyable, like laughing with friends. That causes a release of the natural chemical dopamine. Dopamine helps your brain not this activity as something that should be remembered and repeated. So once there is the release of the natural chemical dopamine in the brain, dopamine in turn helps your brain to remember this activity and create in you an urge to repeat this activity that is giving you a very pleasant experience. Addiction. Addiction is a brain disorder that causes a person to continue to seek out and use a drug despite negative consequences in their lives. So, once a person becomes addicted to drug, they are least bothered about the negative consequences of this in their life as well as about the negative impact of it on others' life. There is a craving, there is an urge that is promoting them to reach for it again and again and to use it. Using nicotine can lead to addiction. When someone uses nicotine, it causes the brain to release dopamine as mentioned earlier. Nicotine causes a larger and longer than normal release of dopamine. It's not like eating a candy where a little amount of dopamine is released in the brain. It is like a large amount of release of dopamine happening in the brain. This causes a strong reaction in the reward system. So the person feels a strong desire to use nicotine again over time and this leads to addiction. That means you are, you've started using it just because of the peer pressure. Very often you can hear this among children of your age saying just a path. It's not, not, not going to do anything. It's not going to harm you. You're not going to be addicted. But remember, the first trial gives you a very pleasant experience. And it releases a large amount of dopamine in your brain, the natural chemical. When compared to the amount that you had while reading a pleasant book or watching a movie or sharing a joke with your friend. So dopamine then kicks in and enables your brain to remember this pleasant experience and you want to have it more and more. That you are reaching to a stage where you're being controlled by the drug. What causes the addiction? And this particular diagram out here, it's giving you a very good illustration of how the reward circuit in the brain respond to the different levels of dopamine. You can see two pictures over here, two sets of uh, brain diagrams over here. One is control and one is addicted. In the addicted, you can see a large amount of the release of dopamine. And this large amount of release of dopamine will register this activity which enabled towards the release of the large amount of dopamine as a pleasant experience in your uh, mind. Naturally, you will develop an urge, a longing to repeat this activity again. And eventually, it leads to a powerful craving that makes it very difficult to stop the state of being ruled by these cravings is 
addiction. And as you move, you can see that over here in this specific slide, it tells you very clearly. You can see two diagrams side by side. It gives you an idea about while eating food, you can see only small amount of dopamine is released in the brain. But while using cooking, a drug, look at the amount of dopamine that is being released in the brain. So eventually what this diagram is telling you is this. In the reward circuit system of the brain, the activity that is going to be registered more is going to be the usage of cocaine rather than eating food because it released large amount of uh, dopamine over there. So this is how you prefer to long for certain activities over the others. It all depends on the release of this natural chemical and the way it enables the brain to register this activity and create a longing in you to engage in this activity again. What are the dangers of vaping? As the world advances, more and more methods of use of drugs also advance. Recent surveys shows that the number of teens who have tried vaping devices, or also called e-cigarettes, is on the rise. While many kids assume that e-cigarettes are safe, the truth is that vaping is harmful to teens in many ways. When more and more awareness was created among the teens regarding getting rid of this habit of using any kind of nicotine sources, people who are really involved in this business, they started to invest their money, energy, effort and brain in developing something that looks less harmful. But unfortunately, it is as harmful as nicotine, that's e-cigarettes. All vaping devices basically work the same. When someone puffs on the mouthpiece, a battery heats up a liquid made up of chemicals like nicotine and flavoring. The liquid gets turned into an aerosol that the user inhales. The aerosol resembles a vapor. That's where vaping gets its name. We have learned about, you know, like in science, pollutants from the factories can remain as aerosol particles that can contaminate the atmosphere, the environment. It is exactly like that. It's contaminating you when you are inhaling it. Almost all vaping devices, including jewel products and puff bars contain nicotine, found naturally in tobacco. Nicotine is especially harmful to teens because their brains are still developing. Using nicotine can affect parts of the brain that control learning and attention as well as cause addiction. In fact, the number of teens who say they use e-cigarettes because they are hooked more than doubled between 2018 and 2019. In one way or other, people who are involved in this business slowly winning the battle and you are slowly, but with a more pace right now, losing the battle. Comparing e-cigarettes to regular cigarettes. Teens who vape may not realize how much nicotine they are being exposed to. The nicotine content of one Yule cartridge and some puff bars is the same amount found in an entire pack of cigarettes. So, though it looks small, 
it's more dangerous than this big one don't be under the impression that oh e cigarettes are much more harmless i'm okay with it i'm not going to get that kind of a problem if i'm clinging on to e cigarettes that's not the reality look over here some puff bars is the same amount found in the entire pack of cigarette vaping also exposes people to other dangerous materials flavoring chemicals are added to many vaping liquids which can be harmful if inhaled into the lungs vaping aerosols may also contain formaldehyde a hazardous chemical that can cause cancer and toxic metals like cadmium if you are used to a biology lab you should understand that formalin or formaldehyde is the liquid in which the specimens are preserved they will keep the specimen without getting rotten for a longer period of time this is what you are inhaling as aerosols and this is what you are giving as a free supply to your lungs you must think about it if you are engaged in it health risk of nicotine vaping nicotine is a highly addictive substance vaping with nicotine could lead to dependence that means a condition that's being created by the drug that you are too dependent on it it could cause nicotine addiction among users who would not have started using nicotine otherwise example smoking it can affect memory and concentration it's known to alter teen brain development the crucial stage during which the brain is fully developed and matured if one is addicted to nicotine that will impair the development of the brain exposure to nicotine during adolescence may cause so many other problems as well reduced impulse control cognitive and behavioral problems it's not only behavioral intellectual variations and problems can happen as well vaping may predispose youth to addiction to nicotine and possibly to other drugs look at the helpless condition in which this teen is in she really want i want to start a no vaping campaign this isn't cause of vaping i got pneumonia that saved my life that vaping wouldn't be not so such stuff failed me would have failed me okay over here recreational use is it obvious the most vocal of the response proponents of uh, recreational drug use are those who smoke marijuana they argue that marijuana is not addictive and has many beneficial qualities unlike the harder drugs but recent research has shown that even marijuana may have more harmful physical mental and psychomotor effects than first believed each year new scientific studies find more ways that long term marijuana use is harmful to your brain your health in addition the national institute on drug abuse nida reports that marijuana users can become psychologically dependent and therefore addicted Nida estimates that one in every seven users of marijuana become dependent. Well, how come it is being legal in a country? These are some of the slang terms of marijuana, which for converse, uh, conversation with teens, it may be helpful for us, I mean adults, to be familiar with different terms for cannabis. including the term marijuana cannabis may be 
known by different names across different cultures, communities, social groups, and these names include the names given over here: pot, bad, wax, earl, perp, keef, top, anicomb, herb, rosin, trees, boomweed, Mary Jane or MJ, ganja, skunk, shatter, butter, gangster, dang or dang creepy. A portion of cannabis prepared for smoking may be called a spliff, joint, doobie, other drugs such as cocaine, crack, ecstasy and methamphetamine. Speed or crystal meth are also available. It's good to know the slang terms. We do not know right in front of us in different social st- settings. Maybe you are a teacher. Maybe you are a doctor. Yeah, doctors are aware of these names, of course. Or as a parent or as a catechism teacher. It's good to know these names because right in front of us kids may be using these names and you we will be standing there not knowing anything of the slang. that they are using to represent the drugs hallucinogens psychoactive drugs like hallucinogens are known for altering your perception of reality while most are not addictive they can all pose serious health risk they are commonly split into two categories classic hallucinogens such as lsd and dissociative drugs such as pcp Both types of hallucinogens can cause hallucinations or sensations and images that seem real though they are not. Additionally, dissociative drugs can cause users to feel out of control or disconnected from their body and environment. Hallucinogens as the name indicate it just create a hallucination. Once its intoxication is over the person who is using will come back to reality common examples of hallucinogens lsd lysergic acid diethylamide is one of the most powerful mind altering chemicals see the name mind altering chemicals it's clear of white odorless material made from it is a clear or white or odorless material made from lysergic acid which is found in a fungus that grows on rye and other grains lsd has many other street names including acid blotter acid dots and meloilo some hallucinogens are extracted from plants or mushrooms and some are synthetic human made historically people have used hallucinogens for all religious or healing rituals more recently people report using these drugs for social or recreational purposes including to have fun deal with stress have spiritual experiences or just to feel different just to feel different i tried it it was just for fun i started all this now It had taken me to a stage where I am totally addicted to it. What a pitiful, pathetic condition. Do you want to indulge in activities which will swallow you like a lion and you will never ever get over it? Think about it. This is why this lesson is being specifically given to you, my grade 11. It would be useful for our grade 12s too because you are in in that crucial age where you try to experiment on every single thing that comes on your way so just have some idea about the dangers hidden in your environment how do hallucinogens affect brain research suggests that classic hallucinogens work at least partially by temporarily disrupting communication between brain chemical systems throughout the brain and spinal cord some hallucinogens interfere with the action of the brain chemical serotonin which regulates mood 
sensory perception, sleep, hunger, body temperature, sexual behavior, intestinal muscle control. See, again you can see like nicotine, cocaine. You can see these drugs are going directly to your brain, to your nervous system, the system that controls and coordinates both the physiological, physical and morphological activities of yours. And it is interfering with the action of the brain chemicals, serotonin, and it regulates and it's going to alter all this, your mood, sensory perception, sleep, hunger, body temperature, sexual behavior, and intestinal muscle control. Why do we spend money on something that gives us trouble? Think about it. Classic hallucinogens effect. Classic hallucinogens can cause users to see images, hear sounds, and feel sensations that seem real but do not exist. The effects generally begin within 20 to 90 minutes and can last as long as 12 hours in some cases. LSD or as short as 15 minutes in others synthetic DMT. Hallucinogen users refer to the experience brought on by these drugs as trips. If the experience is unpleasant, users sometimes call it a bad trip. Do you really want to get away from the realities of life? But you will hit rock bottom when you come back from the clutches of the intoxicants. Do we really want to do that? Or do we really want to face it boldly and telling that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus so that I am strong enough to meet these challenges without the use and aid of any of these things. Are you brave enough to say that? Try that, please. Hallucinogens can cause physiological problems as well increase in blood pressure, heart rate, and body temperature. So we refer to certain drugs over here which are of common use among the teens and we looked into the harmful effects that it causes on our brain as well as the harmful effect of that on our body both physiologically and physically. You don't want to look like somebody who is cut off from the reality, spending time in his own hallucinated world or her own hallucinated world. You have better options in life. You have a better way of catharsis. Catharsis means the release of the bottled up emotions in you. You can find a true friend in Jesus. Why don't we go there? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Have you used these techniques? Or are you planning to use these techniques? Without falling as victims to this nonsense? Let's try that together. Our catechism classes are meant for that. Helping you to find Jesus. Finding him, in him, a friend, a father, a brother, whomsoever you want to call. So we can depend on him. We have a lot of options that's being given by God the Father. So why don't we go for that? And we can also share this with our own friends. And those who, who are addicted to things like this, so be brave enough to suggest a pretty strong measure with which we can fight off the fears, tensions, conflicts, conflict, struggles and problems in our life. Look at your Savior, Jesus Christ, standing in front of you, asking you, son, daughter, share your problems with me. Cast all your cares upon me because... I am here to help you. Why don't you, why don't we do that? Let's take a decision. And let's seek someone who can lead you to lead you to Jesus. And again remember, are we weak and heavy laden? 
cumbered with a lot of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Don't give way to this nonsense. Okay? Some of the questions are given for you over here. You can actually answer them. Okay? This is not just to just for the sake of preparing for an exam people this is just to make sure that you can look back review and learn what's good for you what's bad for you and your choice should be the best for you that's christ jesus thank you so much god bless you all and i shall go with part two in the next week blessings from jesus christ thank you before winding up the class, let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, even though your godly presence is there in us, our nature is more inclined toward evil. The strife between good and evil is strong in us. Jesus our Lord, enable us to fight the good fight with all our might. For you are our strength and power. Help us to stand along with the goodness in this strife. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that's it for today, my great loving. May you be blessed by God Almighty in every moment of your life. God bless you and Jesus loves you.